Hey y'all. I want to pray that everybody is is doing okay. That your power and your water and and maybe even your internet uh, is is on back uh, by now. Um, Mississippi, this Mississippi blizzard is has been something else. Um, it's the coldest I think that I've ever seen it here, um, and and it's the the worst effects that I think I've ever seen it uh, since I've lived in Mississippi. Um, if y'all didn't join us for worship at 10 o'clock this morning, uh, face, stream it on Facebook or YouTube. Um, hopefully you can join us at 6 o'clock, um, uh, same place, uh, stream it on Facebook and YouTube. Um, we had to, Our internet went out again, so uh, we had to do it by cell phone. Thankfully we have uh, uh, a good data plan, so we were able to, uh, to join in and worship. Um, so try to do that at 6 o'clock after you hopefully watch this. Um, uh, COVID numbers uh, are dropping, which is great. Um, so as soon as the water gets back on at the church, we will regather in person, uh, hopefully next Sunday, uh, for Sunday school and worship. Um, as far as Wednesday nights and Sunday nights, we are still not gathering in person, but Wednesday, the first Wednesday of March, which I think is the third, uh, we are planning on regathering in person on Wednesday nights. Um, so we are planning something special, so uh, we'll let you know what that is as that day gets closer. Uh, prayer requests, uh, of course, a lot of people still in Mississippi and, and elsewhere are without power. Uh, some even in our area without water, whoever's on the, the church line, uh, water line, they still don't have water. Uh, so pray for them. Um, internet issues, uh, like I said, have been, uh, ours has been sporadic, uh, so connectivity uh, people without good uh, cell plans or data plans, uh, they're having a hard time staying connected um, like they're used to. Uh, so just pray for that. Uh, and of course, pray for the pandemic. Uh, the, the, the numbers will continue to drop. Uh, it's still still here, but it's still having an impact on people. Uh, the vaccine distribution got slowed down by the weather, so pray that that picks back up where it's supposed to be and, and people can get uh, get those vaccines as soon as possible. Um, so, uh, so let's pray. Father God, we thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity to gather, um, even if it's online and, and through uh, a recorded message. Uh, Father, we pray for, uh, people all over the country, uh, even in Mississippi, that are still without power and, and even water. Father, pray that, uh, that those needs would be met. I pray that, uh, that we, if we know somebody, uh, that is without Lord, we could we could help meet those needs. I know some people in the church that have already have done that, so bless them for that, Father. Uh, most of all, just uh, help us remember them in our prayers. Uh, be with those who are still experiencing the effects of COVID-19. Uh, Father, continue to reduce the numbers and distribute the vaccine so that, so that we can fight this and um, heal people. Uh, so we pray that help us to look into Your Word uh, tonight. Um, as we think about uh, what time of the year it is uh, as Christians and for the church. And we pray these things in your son's name because you love us, uh, you've loved us first, and you still love us um, in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, um, so I want to, uh, first of all, show a clip, uh, kind of an amusing clip, uh, that I've used in the past for video clip Bible study, but this is not video clip Bible study, but I'm going to use this little clip. Uh, so take a few moments and, and watch this short clip, and then we'll be back. Oh, that's not good. Oh, I don't need this. I'm already late. Somebody will come. Anybody out there? Do you have a phone? No. Sorry. Somebody! Hello? There are two people stuck on an escalator and we need help. Now, would somebody please do something? I don't believe this. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> well, there's nothing else left to do, is it? All 
All right, so uh, kind of a humorous clip about these two people on the escalator. I um, also want you to look at this. This uh, just a regular piece of lint here. Uh, uh, kind of big for pocket, so it didn't come from a pocket. Um, it came from the dryer. Um, so how is this piece of lint and the people stuck on the escalator related? Uh, well, believe it or not, uh, God's Word has the answer. Has the answer for everything, right? So, uh, I'm going to read Isaiah 30, 15. This is what it says. This is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel, says. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. But you would have none of it. So, this passage actually explains how this piece of lint here and the video clip of the people on the escalator are related. Y'all, we are in the midst, you may not know this, but we are in the midst of what the historical church has called the time of Lent, spelled with an E, not with an I. But what is Lent? Well, Lent, uh, if you don't know, is the 40 days preceding Easter, not counting the Sundays. Uh, why 40 days? Well, if you remember, According to the Bible, Jesus spent 40 days and nights in the wilderness preparing for his ministry. He was seeking the face of the Father and experiencing and identifying our need to do the same thing, seek the face of the Father. So Christians all over the world and in most denominations have recognized and observed this period, this season uh, as of Lent as a time of repentance um, and reflection, uh, and for some, even fasting. Um, when does it start? Well, it starts with Ash Wednesday, which was this past Wednesday. Um, and, but the date changes every year because the date of Easter changes every year. Why ashes? Why Ash Wednesday? And why ashes? And why does the date change? Well, those are stories for another lesson. But to keep this short, we're going to move on. So now that you know just a little bit about Lent, what Lent is, uh, let's connect it to the video clip and the Isaiah uh, passage from Isaiah 30, 15. I'm going to read that passage again. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, the Holy One of Israel. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust is your strength. So this passage says that our salvation is found in repentance and rest. Now let's be clear at the very beginning that our salvation is found only in Jesus Christ. Our faith and our trust in his relationship with the Father and in what he has done to us and for us in his birth, his life, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and his ascension, and his sitting right now at the right hand of the Father. Jesus himself said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So it's only in Jesus Christ that our salvation comes. But the experience of that salvation is much broader than just taking that first step, which we all need to do, taking that first step of faith in Christ. That's where it begins, but it continues in faith. In other words, it's a daily stepping out in faith. It's a daily trusting in Jesus Christ. That's where repentance comes in. Uh, repentance is a 180 degree turn. It's an about face from the direction that we were heading in. And we need this not just at the beginning of our salvation experience, but every day, y'all. Now, I can only speak for myself, but I suspect that there are other Christians out there that might have a bad thought every once in a while, that might say an unkind word every once in a while, or might even commit a selfish act every once in a while. So what do we call these things? <laughs> we call these things sin. It's, it, sin is an assertion of my rights. It is my will, my way of thinking, my way of speaking, my way of doing things, regardless of what God says and what he wants, above and without regard to what Christ wants. All right, 
So we are called consciously and willingly not to do that. We are called consciously and willingly to participate in the life of Christ. But when we refuse to do that, that's what we call sin. So we must repent. You know, Paul points this fact out uh, in Philippians 2, 12 through 15. This is what Paul says in Philippians. Therefore, my dear friends, as you, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything, everything, without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. Guys, those people on the escalator, think back to that clip. Those people on the escalator refused to participate in their own salvation. They just stood there. They were stuck there because they refused to move. They, all they had to do was move their feet in the right direction. As Christians, we do the same exact thing. We don't repent. We don't turn and go in the right direction. We are not, as Paul said, working out our own salvation because we continue to grumble, we continue to argue, and all sorts of other types of sins from which we don't repent. And we don't recognize our need to stop living that way or do anything about it. The other part of Isaiah says, in quietness and trust is your strength. So once again, Lent is not only a time of repentance, Lent is also a time of reflection. What are we to reflect on? We are to reflect on our walk with Christ. That is, our participation in his life and fellowship with the Father in the Spirit. So traditionally and historically, Christians during the season of Lent have chosen something to give up during this, these 40 days uh, and replace it with reflecting on, in other words, thinking on our inclusion into the life of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We've been included in that life through Jesus Christ. In other words, we are, as Isaiah said, we are to be quiet and trust in Christ. What do you give up? Well, that's going to be different for every Christian. Um, some Christians fast. They give up food for 40 days. Uh, not all food, but uh, most food. Uh, and they just drink water. Um, so they, Or they fast from uh, certain types of food. Uh, like I said, not all food. Um, Roman Catholics, a lot of times they fast from beef. That's why they eat fish. Um, when I was at Terry High School, I was the sponsor of Fellowship of Christian Students. Uh, and I know a girl that uh, during Lent, she decided she was going to give, give up eating chocolate. Maybe kind of tough. But she said, I'm going to give up chocolate. And instead of eating chocolate, every time I want to eat chocolate, I'm going to reflect instead on my fellowship with God. I'm going to reflect instead on my walk with Christ. Every time I crave chocolate, I'm going to stop and say, no, I'm not going to eat chocolate. I'm going to think about Christ and my participation in his life. Uh, I've known other students uh, in the past who have chosen to give up. Wait for it. Wait for it. They've given up video games. Whew. So the time they would have spent playing video games they use to read their Bible or pray. You know, it can be anything. Maybe it's chips. Maybe you're going to give up chips. Or maybe it's Cokes. Uh, or maybe it's TV. Or maybe it's uh, Netflix and Hulu or Amazon Prime. Uh, you know, movies. Or, or maybe just online shopping in general. Uh, that you're going to give up for 40 days. You know, it, it could be anything. Or perhaps even... It could be you even give up for 40 days social media. So many of this past week, many of us in this past week, uh, we were actually forced <laughs> to give up a lot uh, when our power went out. 
Uh, yes, it was very unpleasant experience, uh, especially in the face of those temperatures that went below freezing. Uh, we're down into the single digits with the wind chill even. Uh, but you think about all the electronic distractions that were gone during that period. Guys, we live in a world. Indeed, we live in a culture in which our attention span is very small. News, I mean, think about this. This is, this is research-based. News outlets limit themselves to between 70 to 150 characters when they're posting news items on social media. Our conversations uh, that take place, they're filled with emojis. <laughs> so it's no wonder that our attention span has shrunk. It's, it's gotten small. In fact, there was a 2018 study done by the Microsoft Corporation that found that because of our digital lifestyle, it has made it very difficult to stay focused. Um, the human attention span, this is what they found, the human attention span has shortened from 12 seconds to eight seconds in the span of just over 10 years. Eight seconds is the typical attention span. You know what that's shorter than? That's one second shorter than the attention span of a goldfish. Guys, this trend is, is continuing. Uh, and it was actually foreseen by uh, a Nobel-winning economist named Herbert Simon way back in 1977. This is what he wrote. A wealth of information creates a poverty of attention. A wealth of information, which is what we have with the Internet and social media, a wealth of information creates a poverty, a lack of attention. So what does this mean with regards to uh, Christians? And what does it mean in regard to Lent? It means that even in our Christian walk, we are so easily distracted. The point is, y'all, that we need to seek the Father's face. We need to seek the Father's heart and, and, and find and give up whatever is distracting us so that we can better focus on our walk with and in Christ so that we can more deeply walk and participate in his life. Y'all, the season of Lent has already started. It started this past Wednesday. So we really need to get on the ball here. Let me read one more scripture. This is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. 2 Corinthians 6, 1 and 2. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for this historic season that the church has recognized down through the centuries as a time to stop and repent, to get our lives and our walk back on the, on the track that they need to be. Uh, Father, to reflect on our relationship in Christ. Guide us now, Father, as we, as we choose. Uh, help us to find those things or that one thing that is distracting us in our Christian walk and give it up and give it up at least for 40 days, Father to focus on you. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you so much for your grace that you have poured out on us in Jesus Christ and continue to pour out on us in our relationship with you in him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Guys, Miss Denise and I love you and we miss you and we hope to see you Sunday. Take care.